So we talked about latent energy, and now we're going to go back and look at a few things in regard to radiant energy and our study of thermodynamics. Now, again, thermodynamics, you might think of thermoses and heat, but really thermo is in regard to energy, and this is energy in motion, thermodynamics, energy in motion. And when we're talking about radiant energy from the sun, how do we transfer that in our thin atmosphere? How do we transfer that through the vacuum of space? Well, let's keep in mind what we do know about the first law of thermodynamics in that energy cannot be created or destroyed in the universe, only transferred. Well, how are we going to transfer it? There's a number of methods, and some of the methods are like delivery systems through vacuums and thin atmospheres, and they involve absorption, which generally changes the heat of matter, or reflection, which bounces off matter, or transmission that passes through vacuums or thin atmosphere or glass or still water. So let's explore that a bit more. When we're talking about interactions of radiant energy with the Earth's atmosphere and with the Earth's surface, we're generally talking about these three different things. We're talking about the absorption, the reflection, or the transmission. This gives you an idea of what this looks like. So if this is the surface of the Earth here, and we're talking absorption, absorption will move that radiant energy into the soil. If we are talking about two different types of reflection, we are talking about the fact that the radiant energy will come down and bounce off the surface of the Earth. It can bounce off in a straight way called specular with the same angle, or it can bounce off in a scattered motion called diffuse reflection. We see both, um, and they both have different purposes. When we look at radiant energy transmitting through vacuums or through thin atmospheres, transmission can go through surfaces like still water and heat the um, surface, the, the, uh, the first 30 feet or so of still water. It could go through a surface like clear glass and heat the dark um, car seats behind it, which is behind some of the tragedies that we know about with children and pets in cars. It can heat through thin air and go down and heat into more dense atmospheres by transmitting through. Let's look at that a bit more as well. When we are talking about reflection, we talked about specular reflection, which bounces off at the same angle. That specular reflection bouncing off at the same angle is known by another term called albedo. So albedo is specular reflection off of surfaces of Earth. And you can reflect an enormous amount of radiant energy. Fresh snow can reflect up to 95% of the radiant energy, which is why it's really easy to get sunburned on a sunny day in January because of all that reflection off of the fresh snow. Conversely, clouds, especially thick clouds, um, can reflect an enormous amount of energy from their tops, which is one of the reasons why it is so much cooler on days with thick cloud cover. Now, when it comes to looking at albedo of water, you might think of water as being a highly reflective surface, and this would seem to be a very low number for the amount of reflection that you would expect off of water. After all, when you go into a pool, you always have to have sunscreen on because there's so much reflection off the pool water. Well, that is 
still water. And still water has a smooth surface that can reflect. But 70% of the Earth's surface is ocean water, which is really um, uh, not smooth at all and subject to so many ocean waves. So I can see what they're talking about here for 10% albedo, but there's an enormous amount of work that has to be done and research that has to be done to really ascertain that that 10% is the correct amount. You see that asterisk there, that's saying that more, more research is needed. In terms of specular reflection, that um, is one angle in and the same angle out. The other type of reflection is diffuse reflection, and that's really responsible for the colors in our atmosphere. We see blue skies. Um, sometimes we see green skies, particularly before violent storms. Um, we might see yellow skies before big storms as well, and you see red sky at night. And all of these are due to different scattering patterns that are available in the atmosphere. When you are looking at the atmosphere, you'll see different hues based on the density of the molecules in the atmosphere at the time. Blue wavelengths of light are our, our, our smallest wavelengths of visible light so that small wavelengths run into the very rare molecules that are up high in the atmosphere. And when the blue wavelengths of light run into and collide with a rare molecule, they'll be scattered all over. So that is why we see blue, particularly um, during the mornings and during the afternoons of the day. We might see green when there are, there's a lot of water vapor in the atmosphere that can cause the longer green wavelengths to start to scatter. Then we might see yellow when there's even more water vapor in the atmosphere. We talk about hurricane skies and that water vapor can scatter the longer wavelengths of yellow. Remember, we're working from ultraviolet or blue through green, through yellow to red and infrared in terms of the electromagnetic spectrum. And in fact, red is the longest visual wavelength. And so it will scatter last because it doesn't hit much of anything when it's so long. So you might see that on an angle at night with red skies at night, sailor's delight. And that is um, scattered through a rather um, um, dense, um, dense atmosphere that will pass by and leave a really great weather pattern coming in behind it. So I hope that helps you to understand a little bit about specular and diffuse um, reflections that we were talking about. And in terms of that, when we talk about transmission, we're talking about sunlight that comes in on still water surfaces and can be, can be transmitted to heat the bottom down to about 30 feet. Or we can think of solar energy transmitting through glass to really heat up furniture in your living room or your car seats as well. So it transmits to the surface underneath. And in terms of absorption, we are going to be studying absorption and its effect on radiant transfer in the next video.